Professor Dave and Chegg here. We've learned a lot about chemical reactions and the energy exchanged when they occur, but we also want to understand the factors that determine how quickly a reaction occurs, otherwise known as the rate of reaction. The study of rates of reactions is called kinetics, and it is very important, so let's dive right into this topic now. There are many reasons why one reaction might happen in the snap of a finger, whereas another could take a year, and these time frames determine how useful certain chemistry is to us. A rate is defined as the measure of how some property changes over time. Just the way that speed measures distance traveled per unit time, a rate of reaction measures the change in concentration per unit time. This means how much reactant is used up or how much product is produced per unit time, which is usually measured in seconds. Sometimes this is easy to measure, like if a product of a reaction in liquid solution is a gas, and we measure the changing pressure that the gas exerts. If a colorless solution generates a colored product, we can measure the change in color by measuring light absorption. But whatever the method may be, rates of reaction are always expressed the same way, and that is change in concentration over time. For this decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, we can calculate the final concentration minus the initial concentration, giving us the change in concentration, and divide by time 2 minus time 1, which is the change in time, to get this expression. This is the rate expression. Remember, brackets signify concentration, and delta, which is the Greek letter that looks like a triangle, means change in. So change in concentration over change in time. If this refers to a reactant, which has a decrease in concentration as it gets used up in the reaction, this will be negative. For a product that is forming, it will be positive. Beyond the values being positive or negative, we must also see how they obey stoichiometry. Here is the combustion of ammonia. Notice the 4 to 5 to 4 to 6 ratio of the stoichiometric coefficients. In order to relate these rates of decomposition and formation to one another, we have to assign coefficients to each rate expression that are the inverse of these. So for ammonia, we have 1 fourth, for oxygen, 1 fifth, for nitrogen monoxide, 1 fourth, and for water, 1 sixth. The reactants will show a negative coefficient since they are being used up, and the products will show a positive coefficient as they are forming. The rate at any particular instant is called an instantaneous rate, and the rate at the very beginning of the reaction is called the initial rate. Instantaneous rates can be approximated by either taking an average rate over a very short time period or by graphing rate data and examining the slope of the line that is tangent to the curve at any particular moment. The slope of that tangent line will be the instantaneous rate at that moment. There is much more to discuss regarding kinetics, so let's continue on and learn about some additional concepts. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.